Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, today's first story comes from MonthFar2068 from the MIV Arsenal here subreddit and says, my common law husband in Dubai and his side piece showed up at my door with their baby. Am I the asshole here for kicking her out, even though she is basically homeless? My husband and I, 40 female and 41 male, have been together for 10 years. I consider them years to be very loving and happy, but apparently not for him, since he had a side piece, obviously. I make furniture and make around 1 million euros a year. My husband is a teacher. It goes without saying that I provide for us. I don't ask what he does with his salary. We live way below our means, however, because we are both minimalists, but we have a big house, nice cars, and lots of art. Everything is mine, however. Apparently, he met his side piece, female 25, under false pretenses, and told her that we were legally married, so he owned half of my company, and everything else I own. When she got pregnant, he started spending his salary on her. I wasn't alarmed, because I didn't know what he did with his money. Now he is in Dubai on vacation and her lease on her apartment expired. So she just showed up at my door with her baby. She told me she was his girlfriend and that he was getting a divorce so she might as well live in his house and I could live in a hotel because I could afford it. She didn't have any money or a home. She literally refused to step out so I called the police and locked myself in the greenhouse. When the police came, she was literally unpacking the child's clothes in the living area. They escorted her out. I was very shaken. Later I found out all the details I included above. My husband's mother thought I was an asshole for kicking out a little baby on the street. That was her only grandson. I used and abused my money and power to control everything around me. But honestly, teachers make 60k a year. So if, as I found out later, he gave her her salary, I can't understand why she would be homeless and destitute. She has big designer bags, designer stroller, and these Van Cleven Arpels jewelry <laughs> when she showed up to my home. But now I'm the arsehole. Automatically, it's one of those situations where as soon as mother started coming to the picture, I thought, well, you know, if mother's got a problem with this shit, she can take her in. OP did respond to that, however. She said she, said she couldn't because she lives in a studio apartment. Another commenter said, he can be homeless with her now, not the arsehole. Opie says, absolutely. He wants to take an early plane home to explain. What is there to explain? He said she tricked him into getting pregnant. I know that he hates children, but how do you trick people into having children? So many questions and absolutely no desire for getting any answers. I feel only emptiness. A commenter says, can't be tricked into pregnancy if you're not sticking your thing where it doesn't belong. Not the arsehole. Opie says, exactly. How do you get tricked into pregnancy if you don't cheat? Commenter says, if he didn't want children, he went for a vasectomy. If you're interested in the explanation, then sure, get it, but it won't change anything. You don't really owe him anything as if your relationship was based on mutual respect and monogamy, then he's broken it. Opie says, he didn't want to lose his manhood. Uh, it's literal reason. The commenter says, he hates children and is a teacher. Or does he teach all the humans? Obviously, you're not the arsehole, but as a former teacher who left the classroom because I started disliking the kids, it wasn't fair to them and my patience was about 97% gone. I'm curious. Opie says, yeah, he teaches high school children. He always was set on being child free. Commenter says, how long has his mother known she has a grandchild? Opie says, wow, I never thought about this. I assume she only knew after I called her, but probably she did already. A commenter says, I hate that you think you could be an arsehole for this. Opie says, well, I really hated the idea of a baby being homeless. And I truly contemplated letting her be in the guest house. But honestly, I was terrified of her. A commenter says, minimalist. That word does not mean what you think it means. You are not minimalist. Opie says, oh, sorry. Maybe it was the wrong word. I just meant I don't go on shopping sprees or have multiple walk-in closets or travel once a week. A commenter says, I'm confused. If you're common law spouses, you will have marital assets and need a divorce. 
is the house your personal property or marital property? But you still don't have to let the other woman in your home. And if it's so important to mother-in-law, she can let them live with her. Opie says we have no marital assets, as it was clear from the start when we moved in together that we have separate economy. We are not from the States and my assets are well protected. A commenter says to Opie, okay, you may not be aware that in the US, common law is a legal term for a couple who never signed a marriage certificate, but are legally married due to living together for several years and presenting themselves as married. Opie says same definition here, different rules. A commenter says, how long has your partner been in Dubai? Depending on the length of his stay, he may not even legally have residency in your home anymore. If legal, I'll change the locks now. Opie says he's there for 10 days. One week left. It was the end of school kind of thing. I'm going to gather all his things and send them to his mother. What is left are my things. He has no right to that. And the things we bought living together, 50-50, no matter who paid. All gifts, no matter how expensive, belong to the receiver. Like his car and PC, watches, etc. I don't mind. My art, etc. are protected by signed agreements that protect our assets. Any money or savings are protected by agreements. Commenter says, I gotta ask, how do you make one million making furniture? Also not the arsehole, kick out the hubby too. Opie says, long story short, I started as an interior decorator slash designer. And I started designing what the market lacked in my opinion. Now it's gotten bigger. More details and you could find me, so... A week later, OP comes in with an update and says many are asking for an update, but what's really there to update? Here is what happened this past week and what is going to happen. I will never see him again. It is over. He's back from his trip. Probably he wasn't expected to start his summer vacation this way. My lawyer has already contacted him about what he's owed. It will be transported to his mother's apartment. Whatever more he thinks he is owed, he can sue me and I'll be ready, and I hope he can afford my lawyers when he loses whatever lawsuit he plans to file. Apparently, the apartment his girlfriend lost was his. He was sending her money for the rent, but she spent it on Prada instead. He swears that the baby isn't his, and that he is going to demand a paternity test, like it would make any difference. Maybe for the baby, yeah. I hope to God that the child isn't his. However, so maybe there is a small chance for that baby to have a better future than more loving parents. I am moving in with my parents. Right now I'm in a hotel, but I have no desire to be in that house again with all the memories. I'm selling it. And while I find a new home and sell this one, I will just live with my family. The girlfriend has contacted me a few times via social media because she needs to talk. She wants proof that we aren't married because he told her that we are married. I don't do the illusion, so I just blocked her. <laughs> oh, I like that. She has tried to contact me via her friends and mine, so now everyone knows the truth without me needing to make an announcement. Thank you, girlfriend. Not sure what to update. If I have missed anything, I will leave it in the comments. One last thing. I'm sorry for maybe using the wrong terms. I'm not an English speaker and Google found me common law marriage as the term used in my situation. But apparently, it has certain laws in English speaking countries. Our relationship is long term and we live together. We have separate economy. We have no rights to each other's property or estate. We don't even inherit each other without a will. However, anything we purchased during the time we were living together falls under joint estate. It is divided equally no matter who the purchaser is. I have no problems dividing these assets in half. I've bought our house and some of my expensive art during the time we have been partners. It would have been joint assets if we didn't have cohabitation agreements in place around these expensive purchases. He has no rights to them. Unlike prenups, etc., they're not easy to contest because he is not legally married to me. Under different circumstances, I would have probably given him more than what he's going to get now because I am like that in general. If he had ended things, if he told me he wanted out and he didn't love me anymore, because I know that relationships end and people fall out of love, he could have respected me enough to give me that at least, but he didn't. So I will literally be counting spoons and napkins and he will not get a dime over what he is owed. The top commenter on this one said, I'm glad that the girlfriend made your job easier by telling everyone. For a second, I couldn't figure out why she wanted you to prove that you were married, which, lol. But then I reread your original post and realized that it's because she's expecting half of everything. Has his mother said anything else to you? How was it when soon-to-be ex returned? Obi says, honestly, I don't hold no hard feelings towards his mother. 
I have a mother myself and I've seen her happiness when my brother became a father. My ex-partner is an only child and he was child free or at least pretended to be one so she had no hope of becoming a grandmother. Imagine finding out that you are. If there's any chance that if there's any chance for that baby for some love and happiness, it will be with her. She hasn't contacted me and I don't want her to. She'd probably tell my ex-partner I told you so about him not popping the question. I would have never wanted a legal binding paper to anyone, but when I was younger and still didn't have my business, I would have probably said yes, and gladly so, because I wanted so much for him to ask me. I would have been singing to a different tune right now. It is these thoughts that make it easier for me to cope now. It could have been so much worse and sometimes you hate what's happening but a few years later you realize it was for the better. Commenter says, what has your family said about all of this? I hope you have brothers to threaten his ass when he keeps trying to get a hold of you. Opie says, my family's as shocked as I am. I think we all need some time for this to sink in and I start, gr and I start the grieving process. A commenter says, tell us about his pleading and groveling. I want to hear about his suffering. I'm secondhand furious for you, Opie. You sound cool and level-headed and that dummy blew it big time. Opie says he has been pathetic and trickle truth like anyone like him does. It was a one-time thing and she tricked him into having a baby. The baby is not his and he can prove it. She's just a friend who he helped housing but she turned on him. My last text from me personally was to grow up and act like a father. Now I only talk to him through my lawyer. And one last commenter said, I hope you get a full physical and STD panel run soon. Who knows what he has exposed you to? His baby mama is the only one you know about. There could be others. Opie says, did my first test the day after I found out. I'll be doing it again in a month too. It was all good. Damn, Opie's taken no shit in this situation. And it sounded like he had a pretty catered life and he went ahead and done this. What a buffoon. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Prize Towel 3011 and says, Would I be the asshole for doing a paternity test behind my family's back? Throw away account because I don't want anyone to see this on my main. I, 26 female, have reason to suspect that my dad, 48 male, isn't my biological father. I look nothing like my three siblings and... During an argument with my mum a few years ago, I overheard him mention that he didn't believe I was his. Later on during an argument between the two of us, he also said he didn't even think I was his kid. He immediately backpedaled and said he was just angry and didn't mean it, but it haunts me. It's been two years and it just lingers in the back of my mind. I mentioned doing a paternity test, but he said he wouldn't agree to it because I was his and he didn't want to. He refused to talk about it after that. I mentioned taking a paternity test to my sister, 24 female, and she was adamant that it was a bad idea. She said it would only start arguments and that our mother would never have cheated on him. She is the spitting image of my dad, as is our younger brother and the younger sibling, who have looks like a combination of my mum and dad. I told her I wouldn't do it, however I still plan to. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get a sample from either a sibling or my dad. But my fiance, 26 male, told me I'd be a huge arsehole for saying I wouldn't and then doing it anyways. I argued that none of them understood what it felt like and neither did he. It blew up and he insists that all I'm doing is being dramatic and trying to hurt everyone. We went to bed angry last night and now I'm worried that I'm going to cause unnecessary drama. Especially if it comes back that he is my bio dad. And they find out I did the test. So would I be the asshole for not telling any of them? I know they're never going to agree to it. But I feel like it's my only option. ETA. I realize I never mentioned how I plan to get a sample. My youngest brother is very, very close to me. I haven't asked, but I believe if I do, he'd be willing to give me a sample to see if we are full siblings. I was discussing that with my fiance when he said I'd be a huge asshole for going behind everyone else's back did not make that very clear in the post sorry about that now for me this is a difficult situation but i think this is something that will continue to eat at you if you don't get your answer and for me you know your dad is the one that's planted this in your head you've overheard in conversations and he said to you directly 
that you are not his. So he can't be surprised when you want to test after this, really. He's the one that's caused this, not you, and now you're worried. And of course, there is the questions of ultimately what do you want out of this? Do you just want peace of mind? Are you going to try and find your bio father? What is it that you're looking for? Opie answered someone asking similar questions and said, I didn't want to mention everything in the post that truly leads me to believe he might not be. And I didn't want to say the biggest reason for needing to know because it scares me the most. But I think this comment makes me think I may have to say it. He told me who he thinks my real bio dad is before he decided to backpedal on it. They were family friends of ours when I was younger and as an adult, I had a brief relationship with one of the sons. We dated for a while and the idea that I might have been physical with a half-sibling absolutely haunts me. He knew about the relationship and voiced his opinion when we were together that he didn't like it. We thought about it back then, but he never brought up why. My relationship with my parents hasn't been good for a while. We don't speak much anymore, but you're right about my siblings and fiancé. I don't want to ruin my relationship with them. I don't want them to think differently of me. My siblings don't know about the identity of the other guy being my bio dad, but my fiancé does. He does nothing but help me get through that awful initial phase of that. Nagura says, so it is complex, not the arsehole for wanting to know, but you really, really need to be prepared for potential fallout. Maybe your mum cheated. Maybe she was raped. Maybe she and dad were swingers. Maybe it was a threesome. Maybe you were switched at birth. What happens then? Will you want others to know? There are a lot of factors that can go into something. Opie says, I should say that he told me who he thinks the bio dad is. My mum admitted to me once that she kissed the other guy but swore they never slept together. It was ambiguous whether or not my parents were together at the time since their relationship was on and off before they got married and they both refused to speak about it any further after I mentioned a paternity test. Historical goal says not the asshole. do the test. It will finally answer the question that is eating at you. What you do with the information is up to you. Every human has this innate needs to know, needs to know where they came from where they belong. Your dad is being a jerk about using this against you in arguments. You've done nothing wrong. The DNA information may help you in the future. What if your biosperm donor has different racial characteristics and you give birth to a biracial child? Your fiance could think you were cheating on him. What about medical information you need? You need answers. The OP came in with her update and says, update, did a 23andMe and got results. So from my last post, many people suggested doing a 23andMe. I found a lot of OD relatives on my mum's side and unfortunately found out that my father is, is in fact not my bio dad. This is information I've kept to myself and I do not wish to share it with anyone else in my family. I know many of you wanted to know why my fiance was so against it and why he called me an arsehole for it. He told me he was only concerned for my mental health. I was doing very poorly and he didn't want me to risk my relationship with my siblings. In the end, he told me he would support me, but insisted I at least start therapy first. I did, and he's been incredibly supportive. We're married now, by the way. The man who's my bio dad will never be able to contact me. He was already blocked on any social media I had, but even if he tried, I wouldn't respond as I do not trust him. In the end, this has given me a strange peace of mind. I don't sit up at night and worry over it. My therapist has helped me grapple with the terms of it, as well as help me through the disgust I feel with myself over the relationship I had with who I now know was my half-sibling. I can't tell him as he passed away a couple of years ago in a car accident. My relationship with my parents was severed before I ever did the test. I haven't spoken to either in over a year now and I'm happier than I ever have been. My in-laws are great to me and a man I've known for years has stepped in and walked me down the aisle. I'm surrounded by people I love and it's amazing. I really appreciate everyone's support for my original post. Many of you helped me with good suggestions and no one judged me over the relationship I had had. So I can't thank you all enough. I wish you all a safe and happy travels. Someone was asking OP, was it just this topic that made you cut off your parents or was there other stuff going on? OP says it was definitely one of the things that pushed it. The last straw was him coming to my house to bring my brother when he had been drinking. He completely ignored me in my own home and my mum stood there and cried and called me selfish for being mad at him because it stresses her out. That was the moment that put me over the edge. The reality is it was 26 years of hell before I stopped talking to them. I posted a few months after I went no contact. Learning the truth wasn't easy. I cried for two weeks pretty consistently and struggled with identity issues. My therapist helped me through it though. 
and I'm now where I am nearly a year later. And it sounds like that no contact was very much needed. And I'm glad when people are able to step up and, and do that. Like I always say, it's incredibly tough when you're on the inside, things have been normalized for you, etc. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories, your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.